According to the UBS and Art Basel report, after two years of decline, global art sales grew 12% in 2017 to almost $64 billion. Although that still fell short of the record of more than $68 billion set in 2014. The report also notes sales at public auction of fine and decorative art and antiques rose more than a quarter to $28.5 billion. Sales in the European Old Master sector reached close to $100 million, exceeding its previous peak of 10 years ago. But according to the report, this uplift was due to the auctioning of the Leonardo da Vinci painting Salvador Mundi that went for $450 million without which sales would have actually fallen by 11%. This is a market which reacts to masterpieces. So if in a season you're able to get great works, even if economically the climate is not wonderful, you will still get great prices. So it's the quality who is driving the market more than the context. According to the UBS Art Basel report, while sales at art fairs rose 17%, the cost for dealers to attend those fairs increased by a similar amount. Also noted over the last five years was that the global online art and antiques market increased in size by 72%. Online sales, it says, were key to accessing new buyers last year, with almost half of online buyers being new to the business. The report also noted that the United States remains the largest market worldwide, but that China narrowly overtook the UK's position as the second largest market, pushing the UK to third place. According to the report, further growth in Asian economies is expected to fuel more collecting of artwork over the next five years. To speak more about the financial aspects of the global art market, I am joined by Marianne Maneker. He's the publisher of theartmarketmonitor.com. Thank you so much for joining us today, Marion. Now, in 2014, sales in the global art market reached $68 million billion. Uh, can we expect numbers to reach that high in the years to come? Well, I, we can see the numbers staying around this level, possibly, but the, the uh, 68 billion is a peak and it coincides with sort of global macroeconomic trends that pushed in that direction. Given the current macroeconomic trends, we'll probably not see the market decline substantially, but it, it shouldn't be at that uh, $68 billion level um, constantly. No solid market just stays the same. It needs to go up and down a little to encourage people to both buy and sell. Yes, okay, so the US, China, and the UK make up 83% of the uh, total global sales by value. Can we expect the, the countries that make up the remaining 17% to contribute more to the market? Um, probably not. Part of the problem with those statistics is they focus on the sales centers. So the three major art sales centers are Hong Kong, London, and particularly New York. Many of those sales are for um, buyers all over the world. Uh, and they're often also for works from artists all over the world. So we can see the uh, greater number and increased uh, globalization of artists, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see the sales take place in other countries. Mm -hmm. So Leonardo da Vinci's uh, Salvatore Mundi was a huge sale uh, in 2017. What were some other artworks that sold for very high prices? Uh, well, there were a, there was a Basquiat that sold for 110 million, and a Brancusi that sold for nearly 60 million. There were works um, throughout the market, uh, some by Van Gogh. Uh, there were uh, significant Twombleys sold. I mean, the real story of the art market isn't the huge sale of something like the Da Vinci, though that's obviously a very big story. It's that there are a number of artists who now command these uh, eight and nine figure sums. Okay, so let's talk about galleries for a second here. Now in the report, it said that there was a decline in attendance in galleries and exhibitions. 
Can we blame art fairs for this? No, I don't think so. I think you... Um are seeing those declines more because of the increase of social media and uh, the spread of information uh, in general. It's not necessary to walk into a gallery anymore to see the work of an artist. And in fact, for many art fair, uh, I'm sorry, art exhibitions, the potential buyers have already seen images of the work. Oftentimes they're brought in early to see the work or go to the artist's studio. Uh, so there's less of a need to show up on a Thursday night in um, Chelsea to see an opening. Uh, yes, art fairs have become a place where people connect and do business, but a great deal of w how art is sold is off-premises, uh, right. as it were. Uh, and I don't think that's going to change. I mean, I think that's part of the globalization of art is the ability for art collectors to spend time together at art fairs, at auctions, yes. at Biennales. All right, Marianne, last but not least, how do you think the art market will look in 2018? I think it'll look uh, uh, much the same, maybe even better. We have the Rockefeller sale coming up in May, which will be a landmark event, just as the Yves Saint Laurent sale in 2009 relaunched the art market at a time when everyone thought it was going to be dormant for a decade. The Rockefeller sale will bring new people and new attention uh, to art and potentially, I think, uh, get us back to that $68 billion on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a very interesting auction. I can't wait to see it. Marianne, thank you so much for giving us that great insight about the Art Market Report. My pleasure.